Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Let's read 31 as well. 31. Yes. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> God has given them a land. Now, the instruction from God's prophet was go and check it out so that you can bring for us the fruits of that land. Because God said it's a land flowing with what? Milk and So, where they were was the distance from the land of Canaan that God has promised them. But now, the prophet says, go, go to the land. They sent spies. Where Papa read, there were some leaders from the tribes that they picked. They said, you people should go. Go and check the land and bring us fruits of the land so that everybody can see that of the truth. That land is flowing with what they can go. Praise God. But guess what? When they got there, they saw the milk and honey. They saw the fruits. They said, back in the days, if not for the sin of man, if not for the sin of man, anything you plant comes out very robust. Big. So, my understanding of that big came to be at a point in time when I was growing up. In my place, our fathers were farmers and they used to plant yam a lot. So my dad, we had a garden, he used to plant yam. It was one harvest that my dad did. The yam was as tall as me. Where's David? King Isaiah. David. Yes. Jesus. Where's King David? King David? I was like King David then. The yam was as tall as me. Yes. Are you yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. No. Yam. Yes. Where my? <laughs> yes, so I, I, because my dad liked farming. His grand, his fathers were farmers. So anywhere we went, my dad liked to have a garden. So he planted yam. He harvested this yam. The yam was as tall as me. I said, "Wow!" I didn't want them to to cut that yam because. I, I fell in love with the yam. I said, how can the yam be as tall as human being? So each time I, I, I carry the yam and I'm standing close to the yam. Can, David, please come, 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 come. You can see how David is. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at David. Just imagine the yam as tall from the ground like this, up to this height. Just this hand is the head, but up to the shoulder. <laughs> you see, David is tall, right? Yes, I'm sure by the time David did the um, house, the um, table, maybe David might be taller than the table. Uh, because when I saw David last week, you were not this tall. Now, bless. A round of applause for him. Hallelujah. But that should tell you how the yam was tall. And in my mind, I was saying, if we had not seen that means almost all the yam we have been will have been seen now will have just been very big, big yams. But you see the effect of sin crippled a lot of things. Are you with me? So they went to this land and they saw that the land was flowing with milk and honey, just as God had promised. But guess what? When they came back, he said, you cannot take that land though, because there are giants there. The people that are occupying that land, they will, they will kill us, they will finish us. What a negativity. What an error. If God has said a thing, and you are now saying the opposite, is that how to cooperate with God? You have lost hope. Hope is a function of keeping that working relationship. 
cooperating with God, what God has said, you put your hand, you put your leg, everything into it, not some part of you. That is cooperating with God. If God has said, I am going to make you great, as in the case of Abraham, I say, God, see, you see where I'm coming from, this small village. Who has ever been great in this, in this village? <laughs> God, I've been too well old. When you come with such a position, you are the barrier to God's promise for your life. And that is the function of doubt and disbelief. With such a mentality, God knows that you are not cooperating with him. And hope cannot, hope cannot try in an environment where you cannot cooperate with God. Because you need God. In the book of Genesis, I think Genesis chapter 2, I think Genesis chapter 2, where God said, let us make man. Let us, huh? 126, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Thank you, Pastor Daniel. Let's go there. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Ha, hallelujah. Can somebody read it for us? Hallelujah. And God said, Let us make it. Let us make man in our image. Yes. After our likeness. And let them live. Let them live. Let them have dominion over fish of the sea. And over the fowls of the air. And over the cattle. And over all the earth. And over every freaking thing that depends upon the earth. Hallelujah. There is a statement there I want us to look at. Let us. That is a very critical statement. Let us. Are you telling me that God summoning the Godhead was not enough to take that decision? Because in this statement, when God said, let us, God was summoning the Godhead, God the Father, the Holy Spirit, you know, and the Son, saying, let us come together, let us join forces and make man in our world. That is a sense of what cooperation. If there's no cooperation, that means human beings probably would have been formed. But because there was cooperation, the Godhead came together and they formed what? Man. In the same vein, having hope on God is a matter of you cooperating and saying that God, you have said it. I believe it. I will walk with you that it comes to pass. But then, what will you be doing? What is your, your work is not to help God really, but your work is to cooperate, to do your own path. Praise the Lord. I want to, I want to read a, a commentary for us. Cooperation with God requires that man should do that which is humanly necessary, while allowing God to do that which is divinely possible. Hallelujah. Your cooperation with God is for you to do that which is humanly necessary. And we said it last week, in a, in a moment of hope, you continue to persevere. That's not when you are despondent. That's not when you relax. That's not when you say, I have hope, and you sleep. Because the Bible says, when men sleep, the enemy came to so what? Tears. In your moment of hope, that is when you should be active. That's when you should do what you are meant to do as a human being. Keeping up hope, keeping up the fire, trusting that it will happen. Hallelujah. Doing what you can do as a human being, not relaxing, not sleeping, not being despondent, not being desperate, not lose, not, not just staying there. I do. Do what you need to do because by the time you're doing what you need to do, it is necessary to take you to where God wants you to be. But God, at the back end, is doing what he can do as God to make it possible.
Because God, who has said it, is faithful and just to bring it what to pass. Hallelujah. There is a consequence for not cooperating with God. In Numbers chapter 14, if we go to Numbers chapter 14, those elders, those elders that went to, to Canaan with Caleb and came back with an evil report, God was angry with them. 